<laughs> all right, we're here with the players. First of all, congratulations to both of you. It takes a lot of bravery, a lot of guts to play on this court, and especially in front of a live audience. So, so big tip of the hat to both of you guys. Yeah. And thank you for putting yourselves out here. We, all of us, really respect it a lot. So, so well done. Um, Mark, talk to us a little bit about the challenge that Mike presented today. Was it, a, was it what you expected out of Mike, or was anything surprising? So I've never played Mike before, but I've actually seen him hit when you, I think you were in high school when I saw you at Carroll College hitting at yes. the 5-0. Yep. And, you know, obviously he was a big hitter. I'm like, who is this guy? And funny enough, he transferred from Western Michigan to mm -hmm. Whitewater, mm -hmm. uh, my alma mater, and his alma mater as well. So I've seen him play, but as I said in some of the confessional cams, like seeing something from the sideline, Ian and Scott, is completely different than looking right at him when the ball's coming at you 115, 120 miles an hour. So I knew that he moves very well. He hits very, very big. So it's one of those things where he's that dangerous type of player that he's able to move, dictate, close in, and also play a little bit of defense, which you've shown me mm -hmm. in some of the points. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely a different challenge from any of the other matches I played with Scott, Alex, um, and, Cole. and Cole. And Cole obviously is a very strong player, <laughs> undefeated mm -hmm. on this court so far. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just a different type hopefully of game you, Hopefully either you and I can change that. Yeah, I need to change yeah. a few things in my yeah. life and before I even have a chance <laughs> of that happening. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, Mike, you and I talked a little bit before the match about mm -hmm. your game plan. How do you feel like you executed <coughs> on what you, what you were trying to do? I feel like the whole first set and the after I was down 3-1 in the second set went pretty much exactly the way I would want to, apart from maybe wanting to come to the net a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But Mark was just doing such a good job at just being able to just hit heavy and deep, just not allowing many times for me to you know come to the net unless he was on the dead run. Because there was one where I, you know, I, I tried to just slice on him and he just blitzed it right past me. So it's like I, I didn't want to overforce it. The one that I did overforce was the one that I just I pushed long and then yep. he and then he aced me to kind of win that game. So I was just trying to just trying to just find something to come to the net, but he was doing a good job of just not being able to at least keep me at the baseline and just forcing me to hit ground strokes. But biggest thing was I was just as I told you I was just trying to just come out and just. Hit, hit bigger serves. That was one thing I felt like I didn't do a good job against Cole. So many double faults and just not being able to yeah. control my service games with the first serve. Being able to win a lot of uh, service games at 40-15 or 40-love. Uh, I'd, li I'd love to he hear you both comments about kind of the mental warfare yeah. uh, side of things. This is something Scott and I spent quite a bit of time talking about up in the booth. The fact that you're both you know, college athletes you're comfortable in that environment where there's like, you know, some, some chippiness and maybe some gamesmanship going on back and forth. Um, either of you guys can take this question. How did you guys feel that dynamic uh, was in this match? So my dynamic, at least my perspective on that type of mental warfare, and obviously we're friends. We, yeah, we don't have any, 100%. <laughs> we don't have any with each now other. We now we Even are. Even if I would have lost, but now at this point we're friends. Maybe. Yes. But <laughs> it's one of those things where my <laughs> perspective is through a different lens than yours because your right. junior background and your college background is much more intense in depth and higher quality than what I had to go through. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for me, even though I'm five years older than you, which is, oh my I'm, goodness. I'm 27. Okay. I'll yeah. be I'll, almost 31. So okay. four or five years okay. older than you. I'm actually the amateur in this <laughs> match because not only am I the underdog, but I don't have the mentality and the ruggedness that you yep. had as a junior and mm -hmm. college player at number one, number two singles mm -hmm. going up. So I don't know if you want to piggyback off that. Yeah, or uh, that's, thoughts. so it's funny enough, it was just the, my two favorite players, before it turned into three, before Rafa Nadal came on the scene, my favorite players growing up were two players that not a lot of people liked. Leighton Hewitt, it's where ever since I was 12 years old, I'd have, I'd have my hat turned on and then I'd just be doing this people all the time and they would just hate it. But it was just that that was the gamemanship. I just love bringing the intense and the energy. So where it's like, I'll, eventually once I grew up, I could finally hit first serves like Andy Roddick, hit my forehand, but taking the gamesmanship from Leighton and just being able to just know, hey, I'm gonna control the court with my backhand and you know, working with so many people at Western, at Western Rack Club when I, and when I was at Western and when I was at Whitewater, um, Scott as well. I, it was just the fact that, you know, you get guys like Eric Martinez, Steve Roadcap, when he did groups uh, at Western, it was just the mentality that no excuses, just get it done. Any which way you can get it done, no excuses, rub some dirt on it and just, and just keep moving forward. Just that old school mentality. Don't look for an excuse. Just try to find yourself and dig yourself out of the hole. And that's where I just, I had to do it no matter what. I was number one singles for as a freshman and with, on a team with 10 seniors and there was four underclassmen and they're just like, who's this little kid? All of a sudden taking, you know, uh, number one singles. And I was just like, 
I just, I just, I, it's just, I just felt like I've always had to prove myself, and it's just, I always just want to compete, and I just love, and to your point, Ian, I love that gamesmanship mentality. I haven't had this much fun in forever because <laughs> that's that's where I just, I, I love it. I love just the intensity. I love the way you know Mark plays. He kind of, he started, and then he kind of got it, brought it out of me, and then you know once I get going is, and I'm, I'm just able to kind of blitz through it, just playing literally that aggressive style of tennis. And the difference kind of between what people see the difference in D1 and D3. D1, there's just those guys, a lot of those guys are just built like football players. And so you have to be able to learn how to, from the baseline, be able to control and come into the net. Whereas a lot of guys from even D3, my doubles partner, Jay Comfrey, shout out to him. Uh, we were all Americans together, but he was 5'7", 130. So when we were playing doubles, I would be back serving huge and he would be up at the net. So we would just be like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work, but it was just, you get a lot of those guys that they're just fast, they're slashers like Mark. And they're just able to just get a lot of balls in play. And it's just, it's just you know, it's just different games. So for me, being able to play best of both and be able to take um, a lot from both those experiences just really, really just helped me. Yeah, and tennis is a lifetime sport. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just be playing this forever. You gotta keep cap. Yeah, keep well, said. well said, well you know, said. Um, one of the things that we both noticed was that, you know, you were all over the place. You were running, you did such a great job kind of hanging on the baseline and t absorbing everything and just sending it right back. I mean, you were like a wall today. And it was just, it, on this court, with the speed of the court, do you find that it's tough to do? Or, I mean, I, you make it look easy. It's funny enough, I love this court so much. I loved when this was Moreland Park Tennis, mm -hmm. you know, and it was a sister club to Western Rack Club with how fast these courts were. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved just the ability just to, the balls are going to be flying around. And that was the one thing I didn't do as well against Cole, he was actually doing it back to me. Yeah. He, was, he, was just, he was just sending balls back to me and it was kind of throwing me off because I'm not, I'm not used to you know, that kind of happening. So I just made the mentality that even though I'm a bigger frame guy, I, I can't run side to side like Mark can. He's, mm -hmm. just, he's just faster and he's quicker there. Me with a bigger frame, I got to at least, and I told Ian this before, I got to control the middle half of the court. Yeah. Yeah. I got to just know that he's going to hit high and heavy where normally that heavy ball, like Rafa would push somebody back and I'm just gonna stand here, I'm gonna give him a little bit of space, maybe I'll be one step behind the baseline, mm -hmm. but I, he, he's just not gonna push me back. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't, that was for sure. Yeah. I mean, but Marco, it looked like your primary tactic was basically to try to push him back, like yeah. to try mm -hmm. to dictate and take control in the rallies. Yeah, and um, Mike said it uh, very well, and you know, that's a very good strategy coming up. You've seen me hit a little mm -hmm. bit not across the net, mm -hmm. but you're planted there like a tree and you're mm -hmm. squatting and just blocking everything back mm -hmm. and waiting for your opportunity to come in and crush it and rush the net, which you did beautifully today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that was my strategy. I probably could have spread him out a little bit more, maybe on the forehand if I was careful to open up the backhand and maybe move you both laterally yeah. and uh, vertically to be able to you know, dictate, but apparently I didn't do a good enough job yeah. today. Because that's the one people that, or one time that especially, people that have seen me kind of recently ever since, you know, I kind of learned this uh, when I was at Whitewater, I just, my, what my mom always said was your backhand's so good, it's so stable, you're not gonna make a lot of unforced errors. Your forehand's bigger, so where people are afraid to hit to my forehand because they know I can unload on it, and they think, oh, I'm gonna hit to his backhand, but that's actually what I want people to do, is I want people to hit to my backhand because I'm just, like you said, I'm just gonna squat, plant like a tree, and I'm just gonna do that kind of the new backhand style, which is just you open up and you just set well, you take counter, it on a rise so well. Count it back just yeah, like, yeah. you know, like Leighton, like Nalbanian, mm -hmm. and like guys like David Gofan right now, and it's Ooh, just, and just being able to just know that if I can force Mark in that forehand corner, potentially then run around it and then, and then, be, yep. then be big on the forehand. Mm -hmm. So it's not often that you see guys unloading on their backhands or even sometimes I'll run around my forehand and hit my backhand, but um, that's just one thing I always know that I can rely on, especially if my serve's not there, but just being able to hit big on the backhand side. What would you do differently, Mark? And how would you play uh, Mike next time, you think? I would play more aggressively on the get-go. I think in the first set, and you know, the people in the chat can attest to this, and the people in the comments section, but I was hitting just at him. And mm -hmm. as he said, yep. he already had that in his head as a chess game to protect you know, his most valuable asset, which is real estate. Yep. So I should have moved him a little bit more laterally. I was actually pretty happy with some of the backhand slices I was doing, getting mm -hmm. him yeah. a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But I should have been at the net a little bit more often to kind of close it up. How many times do you think you came to the net? Once. Mm -hmm. No, twice. twice. I retreated once. And you did, did that, that, <laughs> where we talked about that one, when we, you want, you should have taken an overhead. Sure. Oh yeah, this. Yeah. And yeah. You, you you hit a forehand. Yeah, I should have went like mm -hmm. this with the overhead. That's a new tactic I've been working on. <laughs> bam, bam! Another Flintstones <laughs> reference. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, any kind of final thoughts or uh, reflections on on the match? Uh, I. Uh, I, one thing I kind of said in my, my intro was, or my exit thing was, you know, and maybe I can just ask, there's like, I, I saw that Mark was just trying to, you know, hit 
bigger and it might work against other people. It was just like, I, I, I want it. And that's where like, I wanted to come to the net more, but it's like, because I saw like how hard he was hitting, I felt like I could just sustain that pace. So I didn't really feel like I needed to kind of press mm -hmm. in sometimes. So, and that's where like, I was just, uh, that's one thing I have worked on is just being able to know, okay, when am I going to attack? When do I need to just mm -hmm. stay neutral, not play defense, but just stay neutral, work it until I get a short ball and then be able, just being able to be more consistent. I don't want to move, but it's just like, I'm not going to give him any freebie, you know, winners that a lot of big guys try to go. They just, they just hit like an Isner where it's just like, we'll have 70 winners, but 50 unforced errors, you know, kind of um, as well. And well, that's it. So yeah. secret, you're a little bit more athletic and smart than Isner. Yes. He just happens to have a yes. six foot. Six eight, foot six 10, a little bit bigger than six yeah. foot two. <laughs> so, Mark, um, any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously, thank you. Mike yeah. for coming oh, out. Oh, sorry. Here. Thanks again for, yeah. you, for you coming out. Yeah, I, just, I, I had a joy. I had a, I had a joy playing against you, and, and just in, in this environment, as I said, yeah. most fun I've had in ten years. So I really appreciate it, Mark. Thanks ten for coming years. out. Yeah, that's awesome. We should hit more often if you're ever up here. I'm in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks to Ian, yeah. James, uh, yeah. Tyler, and everybody else behind Essential Tennis, and Scott yeah. as well. Thank you for commenting. Yeah, and thanks for James and Tyler yeah. being here, so we could have, we could have the uh, live scoreboard up because I know that was definitely was definitely big. helped, yeah. and just being able to lot, yeah. you know have it be pleasurable for you know because a lot of my family, a lot of my friends, they don't know tennis, they don't know how the scoring works. So just being able to have that, being able to follow it around, it nice. kind of makes it a little bit easier. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. and thanks to you guys for hanging yeah. out. Would it be possible without you? So yeah. it's, been a, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you guys soon, hopefully. Any other 5-0s in the region that want to take on Mir Mark, email Ian. I'll be, I'll <laughs> take yeah, on all comers. I love it. We'll make it happen. Bring it. Awesome. Bring it on. Keeps getting Thank better. You Keeps getting thanks. better. Thanks. Great job. Even if you want to go grumpy, old man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's a true story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in fighting fit by summertime, so yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Keep it.